this project we'll be exploring fixing gaps between levels of detail, a problem that occurs whenever you put a high and low resolution mesh side by side. We fixed a bunch of crap in the last video, we used logarithmic depth buffers to fix the Z fighting problems, and took a run at the precision problems plaguing the texturing. That got us pretty far, we can zoom in and out and move around at ground level, and things mostly look fine. Except for these. We gotta fix these slivers and gaps that appear everywhere. This is the last piece of technical dead hanging over our heads before we can move on to something a bit more interesting. And what's happening isn't too difficult to understand. If this is our noise function, let's draw some sort of bumpy noise function below. It's continuous, and if we had infinite resolution to represent this, there'd be no problems. But we're fitting quads over top. So if I draw a big quad over top of this, notice how that valley in the middle doesn't get a vertex. But if I draw a second, higher resolution quad, that does catch the valley, forming a gap between it and the lower resolution version. How do we fix this? There's a few ways. The first potential solution to this problem is as follows. Say you've got your landscape here, let's just draw it out a bit, and these are the gaps in your mesh. An easy way to fix this is to simply fill in these gaps by adding another layer of vertices around the edge of the terrain, effectively creating a skirt around everything. The upside to this approach is that it's super duper easy, really just involves adding an extra layer of vertices around the edge and dropping them down. But the downside is that, while easy, you may notice inconsistencies in the terrain. If you were to, say, look on the side at two chunks of terrain, instead of the smooth change you'd expect from lower to higher resolution, you'll see this abrupt cliff. That leads us to another potential solution. Instead of skirts, we could instead stitch the chunks together by moving the vertices in the higher resolution chunk to match the lower resolution one. There's a couple downsides. The first being that this adds a bit of complexity, since each chunk now needs to know what resolution its neighbor is. Getting the neighbors isn't easy, since we're looking at a spherified cube, not just a bunch of quads. Another problem is that there may be potential lighting problems. Just fixing the mesh isn't enough because normals are often generated from the mesh topology itself. Let's get coding. First thing, this code is one gross monolithic function, and we're about at the edge of what I can tolerate. So I'm just doing a quick cleanup pass first, separating things out into functions before we move on. The code for the skirt itself is dead easy. We're just going to go into the mesh generation code and add an extra layer of vertices around the edge. You generate the normals off of that, which should smooth them out between chunks, and then you need to do a pass where you pull these vertices down effectively creating a skirt. And there we go, skirt enabled. Notice all those little gaps in the world are gone now. Can't see through it anymore. If we freeze the terrain camera though, we can move around without the terrain updating. What we see is that the lighting between the chunks isn't too bad, especially if they're higher resolution, but you'll end up with stuff like this where the lighting changes abruptly. If we jack up the height and disable textures and just visualize lighting directly, it's a lot easier to see the problem. See here where there's visible lighting themes? Performing mesh surgery. So the skirts got us pretty far, and you might even decide to stop there. I'm continuing on and hopefully fixing the problem once and for all. Now the problem is, is that we've got these chunks of different resolutions sitting side by side, and we're going to need to go through the mesh and perform a little surgery, moving vertices around so that the edges match. But we need the neighbor's resolution. But we're on a sphere, which complicates neighbor finding. So there's some hurdles. If you have a quad tree node and you want to know what its neighbors are, on paper this is really easy. It's just all the nodes that are touching the one that you're interested in. But in actual practice, it's a tiny bit more complicated. Each node has four children, so getting two neighbors is trivial, they're just siblings. But two aren't. They may share a common parent, which makes things a bit easier, or not and that common parent may be further up the tree, in which case it's not directly clear how to get them. But an interesting observation is, if you've already figured out the neighbors for the parent, then for each child looking for its own neighbors, it's a simple matter of looking at the children of the parent's neighbor. So that means, to build neighbor information efficiently, we need to process the quad tree, level by level, filling out neighbor info. Or in other words, breadth first search. 
This doesn't quite hold up if you're on a spherified cube at the edges, since you're looking at another side with different orientations. But there you can fall back to looking for closest child of the neighbor instead. Once we know the neighbors, the way that we can fix this is by iterating the edge vertices. What you do is use that neighbor information to calculate a stride. Notice how I've calculated this stride, which is basically how many times bigger the lower resolution mesh is, and we'll use that to skip vertices. In effect, we're simulating the low resolution on the high resolution mesh by forcing the vertices to linearly interpolate instead of more directly representing the noise function. And there we go. Once this is enabled on the train, we can wander around, and I don't see any gaps, so this is doing pretty good. I've seen people kind of declare victory here because this is already a huge win, and realistically from this vantage point, it's hard to see any problems. But there are still problems. Let's fix the train camera in place and wander around. Now, this might be just me being picky, but look at those weird lines. Let's zoom in a bit. You see those? Those are lighting discontinuities, and they're caused by the fact that the normals on the edges between chunks don't match up exactly. Let's try to fix this. Now the problem here is that when you generate the normals, those largely depend on the mesh's topology. Meaning normals are usually generated by combining face normals in some way. So let's say that I have two triangles, and we'll visualize this from the side. So these are the face normals. The per vertex normals would look more like this. See how this top one here is kind of a mix between the two? Now imagine that the underlying noise function looks more like this. So then, if, on the right, I replace that low resolution chunk with a higher resolution one, let's just draw an extra vert. Once we start combining these face normals into per vertex normals, they're not going to be the same as the first example. How can we solve this? Well, what I figured is, what if instead of trying to use these mesh normals on the edges, we use an analytical normal instead? In other words, we calculate it directly from the underlying noise function. I can draw a few of these for reference, but that way it'll be the same no matter which chunk you're computing it for. The analytical normal is the true normal, and while it is possible to calculate the analytical derivative directly, I'm going to be using the central differences method because I want to try and fiddle with the delta to match the existing normals, at least hopefully. So in code here, we're adding this function called compute normal central difference. And it'll use a little first-year calculus to compute the approximation of the derivative using the central differences method. And we're going to pass in a step size that's relative to the max of the size of the current node and the neighbor sharing that edge. And here we go. This all kind of works now. I'm not going to lie, this was a bit harder than I expected it to be, mostly because of these small nitpicky problems that I decided to dive into. My solution isn't perfect, I'm not pretending it is, but it seems to work, and maybe someone in the comments will have a better idea, and I'll revisit this and take another pass. But it's pretty serviceable as is. Remember to Patreon it up, also like and subscribe as always. If I remember, the code will be up on GitHub, so go check it out. Let me know what you think. Until next time, cheers.